Woohoo! I'm here. I'm back. I'm alive. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here. I'm finally back after like a month long break. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, before I went on break, um, I. What the heck? Um, yeah, I was on vacation for like a week and a half. And then right when I came back, I wanted to stream, but my computer died. Like, specifically my GPU, so I couldn't stream. Um, so that took like a week-ish to get fixed. And then it got fixed, and I was like, yes, I can stream again. And then I got sick. And so I was just like, well, frack, this sucks. Um, and honestly, today I'm still feeling a little like, eh, but I really wanted to like get back into streaming. Otherwise, I'm never going to finish all these games that I want to play. Like, uh, I still have to finish Dragon Quest and Persona 5 Strikers. And after that, I, I gotta play Nocturne, I wanna play Danganronpa, Rompa? Yeah. And then, yeah, there's just too many games, too little time. Um, but anyways, let's, let's, oh yeah, an Animal Crossing update comes out on Friday. Thinking about streaming that, at least like the first beginning of it. Um, but yeah, let's get into this. Oh wait, I forgot, for Ace Attorney, I'm reading the stream recording screen, otherwise I read a bit too early. When I woke for the following morning, Susato-san was already gone. Oh yeah, because she went back to Japan. Outside the window, the rain came down in sheets. And so began an even longer day than the last, one that I would remember for the rest of my days. I mean, this is the last case of the first game, but I, then I have to play the second game. Which is another five trials. I don't remember anyone's voice. Good morning, Gina. I'm determined to prove your innocence today. I'm sure we can do it. So where's your friend, then? Sorry? You know, and the fancy dress. Susarto, whatever you say it. I don't know. Ah, Mr. Soto had to leave early this morning. She was already gone by the time I woke up. You're right with that, are you? Forget about me if you like. Go and see her off. It's fine. It's not as though Mr. Soto and I won't meet again one day. I even so. But you, Gina. You only get one chance. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes to the lifetime. This trial today is all we have. Good morning, you two. Ah, she brought the cat. How are you feeling, Jenny? Did you manage to sleep? Meow. Wagahai. <laughs> Iris, what are you doing here? What do you mean? When a friend is in need, we show our support. Isn't that right, Wacky? <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Bye. He doesn't like her. Oh, Waki! Great way to show your support, Kitty. Let him have a nose around. What I'm gonna do? Oh, that reminds me. I bought a paper on the way here. Now, would you like the good news or the bad news? What do you say, Rino? Ginny? Oh, well, I think I'd rather get the bad news out of the way first. Bad news is there is no good news! <laughs> Nah, I always take the good news first. You might not live to the ear, ear the bad. Yes, that question always gives away people's personalities. Let's not go there. Alright then, I'll give you the bad news first. A record amount of rain has fallen this morning and carriages all over the capital are struggling to move. Huh? The bad news? Was a weather report? <laughs> I hope that Cece made a train to Dover and that the train isn't delayed on its way to the port. Gosh, yes. Watch, it's gonna be delayed. She was, she's never gonna leave. Alright then, so what's good news? Well, the rain forecast is to subside this afternoon. So even if the train is delayed, it should be able to make up the time later. How's that good news for? Well, that is good news, isn't it? Not really. I couldn't give a monkey's... really. If only all good news cancelled out the bad. And look, 
This trial spit headlines too. Poor broker perishes in pig purse plunder. See? How would you like that? Well, let them say what they want. See if I care. I can't because you're covering your face. <gasps> Don't worry, Bruno will show, soon show everyone that this headline is nonsense. I will. And then, in tomorrow's papers, the headlines will be... Discharge Diver is Darkness Do-Gooder. Is that right, Bruno? Oh, um, yes. Let's hope so. Of course they will. I've absolute faith in you. Pause that. I was trying to sound like Susie. Did it work? Did it? It's like she was still here. Today's paper has been entered into the court record. Now, there has to be something else other than the weather report that's in there, so we should examine it. Good luck then, Rudo. I'll do what I can. So we go into the court record, we look into the evidence. Let's see. Hornbroker perishes in pig purse plunder. How awful. For Ginny, I mean. But tomorrow's headline will be Discharged Divers, Dauntless Dugger, right? Yes, something like that. If possible, I'd like to get even bigger. Bigger? How? How would Pickpocket protects planet post trial? Perhaps? <laughs> protects planet? Ooh, I can't wait for tomorrow now. It's going to be so great. How about we get through today first? Um, let's see, London News. Nothing special there. Is this going to be the same headline? Yes, it is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Skip, skip the dialogue. Um, what's this? It's a sensational story lower down the front page as well. Look. Ministry Mole? Classified secrets may have been leaked overseas from Ministry of Justice. Huh. For a ten-year-old. Ira certainly has her finger on the pulse of world news. It's about secret communications between Great Britain and its allies. Apparently they're being intercepted by hostile nations. Communications are being intercepted, but how would somebody be doing that? That's the question, isn't it? I've come up with three different possible methods so far. Are you looking for a new career, Bruno? No, of course not. I wonder. Perhaps this is what Lord Strongheart was talking about yesterday. Yes, it could be. And it could explain why he has Craigsy running from pillar to post at the moment. Okay. Contains an article about government secrets being leaked to foreign agencies. But what does that have to do with Gina's trial? Can we open this? No. Okay. Is that going to come into play? Oh wait, did we ever examine uh, Susato's notes? Okay, summary... Brick... Magnus... Oh, this is her notes on the Magnus the Gilded case. That's her hundred basketball. Pom, 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 pom. Now to see how you've been returning to us. Hey Alex, how you doing? Long time no see. I hope you've been well. Happy Tuesday. I'm doing good. I'm getting over a cold, so I'm a little like the. But I'm hoping I could go at least a little bit before I have to like tap out for the night. Ugh, whenever I get sick now, it takes me forever to recover, and it freaking sucks. And it's not just because I'm getting old. It's because my body has a weaker immune system. Frack. But I hope you've been well, dude. I hope you had a good October. Can you believe it's November already? That's crazy. Also, I, po I apologize if you can hear my chewing sound. I just really want some M&Ms. <laughs> Sick toast, that sounds like a 90s skateboarding trick. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know the lore like Susie does, but still. I'll be by your side the whole time, giving you moral support and encouragement. I'm not sure that big thing is as comforting as you think it is, to be honest. But that's what she said. It's after Halloween, chewing candy on stream is loud. Nice! It got the golden seal of approval. <laughs> Thank you, Iris. That's very kind of you. Oh yeah, ours. Yes, Ginny? Well, I was wondering, so, about shelves. They fix them up all right. Yes, the operation was a great success. But, who 
Shirley still hasn't come around yet. Eh? I've asked a friend of mine at Scotland Yard to send a telegram as soon as he wakes up. I'm sure Gregson will let us know the moment there's news. Oh, right. No Susanto san and no Mr. Sholmes. It's all down to me today to prove that Gina is innocent of this crime. Also potentially unpopular opinion, crunchy M&Ms are my favorite. Crunchy M&Ms? What are those? I don't think I've ever had them. I've had um peanut butter M&Ms. It's not the Reese's Pieces, but it was some kind of special other M&M. It was weird. This Gina the Fraud, counsel for the defense, the trial's about to begin. Please make your way to the courtroom. It's time, bud. Yes, let's go, Gina. Iris. They were in the blue- oh! oh! I remember seeing them. I never ate them, though. Because I don't really like pretzels. <laughs> Lead the way, Runo. Poor Gina. She's trying to put on a brave face, but I can tell she's worried and scared. I have to believe in her from start to finish. That's the weapon that will secure a victory here. I mean, we tried to believe in Magnus and he was just a loser. <gasps> if I learned anything from my great friend, it's that. Asogi! All time favorite chocolate is Three Musketeers. Ooh, Three Musketeers is good, but my favorite is Kit Kats. Kit Kats are the best, and then I like Milky Way and then Twix. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. The trial shall determine the guilt or innocence of Miss Gina Lestrade. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. Kit Kat is close second for me, but there's something about Three Musketeers that's heaven on my taste buds. I mean, I like Three Musketeers because it's very um soft and like it melts really easily in your mouth. And it's not like, I don't really like too crunchy things or like hard things because then my teeth hurt. I have weak teeth. But Kit Kat, I love wafers. They're so good. The prosecution is ready. The defense is ready. So jawbreakers got- I hate jawbreakers, they're so annoying. I don't like hard candy. I don't really like lollipops that much. Mm -mm. Lord Von Zix. My lord. Remind me, how many years ago was it that you withdrew from the public prosecution service? It was some five years ago, my lord. Five! Uh, uh, uh. Yes, and then two months ago you resurfaced somewhat unexpectedly, and here you are again today. Whoops. Are there some circumstances of which the court should be aware that have led to this erratic behavior? Is he allowed to say that? As a kid, I was disappointed jawbreakers weren't huge like they were on TV. Are you thinking of Ed and Ed Eddie when it was like the size of their head? I was disappointed too. But even just getting like a fist sized one, like. I think one kid had his for a month, and he was legit licking it every day. He didn't even get to the halfway point, and he had to throw it out because, like, it's it got too gross. That was my favorite show as a kid. Ed and Eddie was good. In what one might describe as your former life five years past, you dealt exclusively in matters concerned with the highest echelons of society and government. Really? Yet today, you choose to try a simple case of burglary and murder. I confess I found it more than a little befuddling, counsel. So, Gina's case probably does have something to do with, like, government ministry secrets being, um, spilled out. There are two types of person I cannot abide. Firstly, those wealthy scoundrels who hide behind the mask of philanthropy to cheat the public at large. In me is Mr. McGilded, who you defended against the Reaper two months ago. Yes, I just about managed to work that out. Thank you. Magnus McGilded. If I had known what a monster he was, I never would have defended him. And secondly, even more loathsome. Those wily scoundrels who masquerade as allies only to effect a total betrayal in the final hour. 
In other words, the confident tricksters from those tiny islands of the Far East, the deep- What? What? Oh, that's racist, dude. What the heck? What? Did he really just say that? He needs you now, Rudo. I actually managed to work that out, too. Thank you, Iris. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. A one, a two, a three, a three. Total betrayal? What are you talking about? That torrid look of hatred in Lord Van Zeke's eyes. It's like, if you're gonna snipe at me, just like, say it directly to my face. Why do you have to be like, eh, I'm a hoity-toity hot, hot shot lawyer, prosecutor. Eh, I don't like Japanese people. Like, what the heck? Was that directed solely at me, or was he talking about all Japanese people? An alarmingly scathing explanation, Lord Van Zeke's. Still, the judiciary welcomes the return of the so-called Reaper of the Bay, feared by all London's malefactors. Your Lord Surf is too kind. Now, jurors, the six of you have been selected at random to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to hear the evidence placed before you and determine the guilt or innocence of the defendant? Oh my gosh, how- these, these are not partial jurors. He was my old client. Former lieutenant of the British Army here, don't you know? Chops up, we were born ready. Clean crockery, clean cutlery, and a clean conscience. His lordship's motto is very appropriate here, I think. Who are you? Everything will be stereoscopic in the future. Absolutely, absolutely everything. And I'm ready for it. Regal, thank you so much for the 22 month sub. Who's this person so enough in my notice? I know it's been a hot second, but hope you've been well, dude. I don't understand it. I can't have left it in there. It's not possible. But could I have? Oh my gosh. Did he operate on Sholmes and now he left something in his body? Oh my gosh. Women indispensable in society. Stop. Female centric future awaits. Stop. Wait, this is a dangerous guy. Good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. Is something wrong, you know? Oh, not exactly. It's just... I'm fairly sure I recognize these jurors. Almost all of them, in fact. I'm doing great, very excited for their, that one thing next week. What's happening next week? I know Friday is the Animal Crossing update, which reminds me, I really need to finish updating my island uh, in time for the update. They couldn't help but reuse assets. No, they're finally introducing all the other furniture sets that I've been waiting for. Like, the Regal set, the Gothic set, the Ranch sets, like, they're finally doing that. They're finally introducing hanging lights and more wall furniture. I'm so excited for Happy Home Designer because, oh, in Phoenix Wright, yeah, it's probably they were reusing assets, but it's just like, I mean, I think some of them have ties to this case, though. But yeah. I'm so excited for Animal Crossing. Uh. Really? Funny coincidences like that do happen from time to time, don't they? But it is quite strange. The jurors are chosen at random from London's six million inhabitants, you know? So I've been led to be So I've been led to believe, but something tells me I'm being duped. Isn't the Endwalker beta next week? <gasps> Endwalker's next week? I pre-ordered it, so I'm ready to, like, jump on whatever. Um... But yeah, I've been meaning to run the last dungeon in the in the storm storm not stormblood shadow bringers dungeon for the uh, updated gear set. Very well. Now, Lord Von Zeeks. Maybe when um Final Fantasy fourteen uh Endwalker comes out, I'll stream that. It's the nineteenth. Okay. Well, I'll stream it then. <laughs> 
The court calls upon the prosecution to introduce the facts of the case. As you wish, my lord. Allow me to begin with a word of warning to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. In short, there has never been a more self-evident case of cold-blooded murder. You have to sign up for early access? I thought you just had to um, pre-order the game, no? The victim, Mr. Pop Windybank, proprietor of a pawn shop on Baker Street, was shot from behind and died instantly. The prosecution presents this photographic print of the crime scene. As the court will observe, there is a single bullet wound just below the gentleman's left shoulder. The evidence suggests that the bullet pierced the man's heart, resulting in near instant death. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, because that's how it's been with all the other um, updates. You just had to um, pre-order it, and then you got early access, and then for everyone else, it just was like a week or two later. I was streaming Halloween, did you catch them? No, um, on Halloween, I was at a Nightmare Before Christmas concert, where they were playing the music live, and they had... Um, they had different actors come out to sing all the voices. So like, I saw Greg Proust because he was originally a couple of uh, extra character voices in um, My Baby for Christmas. Danny Elfman was Jack, obviously because he composed all the music and he was Jack. Um, Weird Al was Shock or Barrel. Danny Elfman was Barrel and then uh, Pee Wee Herman was Locke. I don't know, but they were the three little kids. Um, Billie Eilish was uh, Sally. It was really fun, it was really good. Weird Al, yeah. I didn't think Weird Al would be there, but he did one of the voices and it was great. Oh, I wonder if I could like show a picture. Um, I should put it up on my Twitter to be like, I did this, this was a thing. Um, let's see. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but yeah, Weird Al and Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish. And, um... And, uh... uh where's a good picture of Danny Elfman? I have one. Oh wait, uh, I should just find the Pee Wee Herman picture. I only took one. But yeah, in the red hair is Pee Wee Herman. And then Weird Al and Danny Elfman. Can't believe you didn't post this amazing stuff on Twitter. That's how exhausted I was. I was so dead tired and then yesterday I, I had a headache the whole day. Because I was exhausted. I'll, I'll post it up on Twitter after the stream. Uh, moving on to the findings of Scotland Yard's coroner. His report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. And what's that supposed to tell us? It means the victim was likely shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. I was playing observation duty because I liked when the grumps played it. I saw the grumps play it and I was trying to look at what was different too while they were doing it. I couldn't see anything. It was just too much stuff. Someone like the accused, you might say. Eh. The prosecution wishes to present the autopsy report and crime scene photograph as evidence, my lord. Indeed, the court accepts. Hand them to the bailiff, please. The first stream is garbage because I forgot to turn off my VPN so it was framey. Oh no. Okay, time to examine the autopsy report. Shut up, fancies. I now ask the court to turn its attention to this plan of the establishment where the incident occurred. Cool. I'm looking at the photograph first. Okay. That's blood. Nothing else out of the ordinary. Okay. Autopsy reports between 1 to 1.30. Uh, single bullet wound. Okay. So basically what Fancy said. Oh, diagonal. Second stream, I played the sequel and that sucked. You should watch it. It's just me crying and whining and me saying, I don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> Was it scary? I mean, the random people showing up is scary. 
I was debating on getting um, Fatal Frame 5 on the Switch, but I was like, I'm not gonna play that anytime soon, it's too scary. It was so scary. I guess if you're actually playing it yourself and like looking for the stuff, it's scary. But if you're just watching someone else play, it's not as scary. Which is why I was able to watch the Grumps play it. Cause I was like, I'm not dealing with this myself, so it's fine. The proprietor was found at the storeroom where he kept articles pawned to him. A windowless room with a single point of entry, a door to the main shop that was found locked. In this sealed chamber, there were only two persons present. The victim, Mr. Windebank, and the accused. It may further interest the court to know that when the accused was discovered at the scene, she had in her hand the gun used to fire the fatal bullets. But there was also someone else in the store that shot Sholm, so aren't they also a suspect? Well, that's the- Oops, remember, ain't that grumpy little girl pickpocket anyway? She's right, there's 50 traps and even the slums in the East End. Oh, well, it was only a matter of time before she got blood on her hands then. We should play it, all the games are like $3 each. <laughs> we can't jump to conclusions here. We mustn't assume her guilt because of what she has to do to survive. My learned Nipponese friend, it is you who mustn't jump to conclusions. The prosecution has barely begun presenting its case. Okay, but there were other people in the store that shot Sholm, so you know, there were more people in there with guns. So shut your face. Conveniently, this appalling act of murder did not go unobserved. There were witnesses. Good gracious. The dirt game is VR compatible, so I'm gonna have to set it up with VR. I'm just waiting for VR sets to go like way down in price, be more affordable, and be easier to set up. Cause then I'm gonna play Beat Saber all the time. After her testimony, this girl's true nature will be exposed. Pitiful pictures or cold-hearted killer. Here's to establishing the truth. Someone throw that glass in his face. Hmm, the court will take the floor pan and the arm, firearm into evidence. Hand them to the bailiff, please, Lord Van Zix. At once, my lord. Okay, a crime scene foreground. And a gun. This isn't good, but we're gonna examine the evidence. Okay. Mm. Is there any way to look at the chamber? This is Mr. Windbag's gun. The cylinder is completely empty. Mr. Windebank always used to keep this gun on ha to hand on a shop counter. Yes, but only ever with a single bullet loaded, I understand. That's right, to keep all the pawned articles that were in his care safe. But his one bullet was fired that night, and the poor man lost his life. Was he protecting his shop, I wonder? Trying to keep the article safe? Hmm. Oculus 2 is pretty great. Only downside is forced Facebook, but there's always there's a way to remove it afterwards. Freaking Facebook. Uh, is this gonna be the same? Yeah, okay. Okay, so the chamber is empty. I was thinking like there might be like gunpowder or something. But there doesn't seem to be anything else out of the ordinary. Okay. Crime scene floor plan. Okay, so he was shot like here, but Gina's lying down here. Unless they're like, and when he when he fell, he twisted his body, and that's why he ended up this way. Mm. Okay. We can't see what this says, huh? Okay. And I think that's it for new evidence. So I feel like the mood in here has turned very gloomy all of a sudden, Bruno. I think that's because it has. Oh my gosh. Let us begin. Bring forth the witnesses to the foul murder of Mr. Pop Windebank on 16th April of this year. Oh my word. 
Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the courts. Name's Nash Skelton. Occupation is, um, baddie. Professional baddie. Name's Ringo Skelton. Occupation's, um, shamism. Tobias Gregson, Scotland Yard Inspector. That's right. We're what they call... The three Skulkin brothers. What? They're brothers? What are you looking at me like that for? Don't let me in with your lot. Cool, Brian, if that's cool. Don't you know what we've got going through? It's our old blood. Lost contact with him, we have. So we scour every shade corner of the capital. And then last night, we come across you, the very spit of the bill. Ain't that right, Ringo? He is, now she is, the very spit of him. So we decided there ain't what was... Wait, wait, what? Then what we was gonna do, we was gonna call you. Big Buff's Sulky. Come on, leave it at you two. So they're not brothers? Sulky Skulkin? And that's before he's running out of chips. Well then, Inspector Silky Gregson. <laughs> Begging your pardon, my lord, but the name's Tobias. What I would like to know, Inspector, is what you are doing in the witness stand. The Skulkin brothers are currently under arrest, my lord, on suspicion of theft. Hmm. Thieves, are they, these three? No, my lord, beg your pardon. But oh, please don't let me in with this law. Two nights ago, these two brothers illegally entered an establishment with intent to burgle. And in the course of their nefarious activities, they became embroiled in a far more sinister crime. By Jove, you mean to say? What an extraordinary coincidence! Indeed, my lord. While attempting to burglarize the pawnbrokery, they witnessed its proprietor's murder. You know, they could be the murderers. Like, Ringo is small enough to shoot diagonally. Older, older! The various trespasses of these brothers is not the subject of today's proceedings. Though they will naturally face trial in the very near future. With your lordship's permission, I'd like to remain in the stand to keep these jets on the straight and narrow. Of course, Inspector. Skeptical as I am about the caliber of these witnesses, I will permit them to take the stand. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin, you will now testify before the court. Describe the events of the night in question and what exactly you saw. At you. Cause a Skulkin's never Skulkin. What? Get out of it. Illegal entry. We was walking down Baker Street in the small hours and the gaff's door was ajar, see? It was like some kind of sign begging for us to go where it was. And once you got inside, caught blimey on me, we heard a gunshot from the back room. We went to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. We never done nothing, Governor, we never took nothing, we just left that black nice and quiet. Hmm, a terrible coincidence, it would seem. At the precise moment, this miscreant entered the property and an uh, even more sinister crime was foot. The witness's testimony is consistent with the crime scene in every detail. The door providing access to the storeroom from the main shop was indeed locked from the inside. And within, only the victim and the accused were found. Hmm. I must say, it does appear to be an overwhelmingly simple case. Still, the defense may cross examine the witnesses now, of course. Counsel, if you please. Counsel? Ah, uh, um, yes. What's the matter, Bruno? Sorry, I. I was just stunned into silence for a minute by the blatant lies being told by that pair in the stand. 
I know that it's all nonsense because I saw it with my own eyes. I'll just have to expose her testimony for the pack of lies it is. What did I see? I don't remember seeing anything. Bow, bow, bow. He was walking down Vegas and the gaff door was ajar. See, press. What the? What the? The front door of Windebanks was ajar, you say. What time of night was this? Must be about one. Right, Ringo? Yeah, I'll play so. Right, Socky? How would I know? The place will have been shot at one in the morning, just like every other shop in town. What was pitch black? Mm -hmm. That's true. Ain't that right, Ringo? <coughs> ah, choking on him and <coughs> I'm not so sure, Nash. I'm seen to remember a little light button inside. What well, are you, sulky me old mucker? Leave me alone. It definitely was a small lamp burning inside. That's what alerted us to the situation in the first place. And when these gentlemen ventured into the open establishment, the accused Miss Gina Lestrade already had the muzzle of her gun trained on the unfortunate victim. That's conjecture. Yeah, that is pure conjecture. Hmm. Huh, perhaps, but it changes nothing. I really want to punch this guy's face. These brothers inadvertently wandered into the middle of a cold-blooded murder. Simply because they found the door of the victim's establishment open and ventured inside. Right, that's what happened. It's like some kind of sign begging for us to go when it was. What, what are you trying to suggest? That you had to go in? Well, go on moves in mysterious ways, they say, don't they, Ringo? They do, Nash, they do. Must have been so sort of providence, I reckon. God's will often presents itself as the whim of thieves, does it? It weren't no whim, I'm dead sure of that. It weren't, Nash, it weren't. Every set of time. I don't just find doors open in the middle of the night like that. Nah, there's no two ways about it. It was a sign that our long lost brother was inside. They're not very good at liars, are they? Well, you can't deny it. It wants to look what looks just like I'm broth. I said, cut it out. Those ships are getting a chomping today. But once you got a side corp, I mean, let me wear a gunshot from the back room. A gunshot, you say? Just the one. Are you sure about that? Because Sean's got shot. Yup, just the one, governor. I can swear to that. It was, Nash. It was. Ain't that right, bruv? The firearm used to belong to the victim himself. Yes, Mr. Winterback always used to leave his gun lying around on the counter. Right, I remember. We examined it. We found the revolver was completely out of rounds. That makes sense. Mr. Winterback always used to say he only ever kept a single bullet loaded. That's true. I remember him saying that as well. So we can say with considerable certainty that only a single round was discharged from the firearm used as the murder weapon. Yes, Lord, we can. And I should remind the court that the firearm in question was discovered in the hand of the accused. Hmm. Wonderful. We want to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. Do you mean the door between the main shop and the storeroom? If my learned friend is having difficulty grasping the situation, perhaps a drawing would help. Excluding the shop's entrance from the street, there is only one other door, that of the storeroom. Of course, there was only one with a little oil lamp burning, not much to see by. And the door was hidden behind the curtain and all. That's right. When we arrived, the door was mostly obscured by the curtain. Tell me, 
tell me? Why exactly did you try to open that door? Eh? Any normal petty thief would run at the sound of a gunshot, I should think. Oh, well, um, you're tinted rabbit, Gringo. Well, Nosh, um, yeah. I suppose you'd have to say we ain't normal, eh? Broadly speaking, humans respond in one of two ways on hearing a gunshot or a scream. The timid flee, gripped by fear, while the courageous investigate to see if they might help. Shut up! Shut up, Antiques! Are you trying to say they're courageous? Shut up! These gentlemen are the latter inclination. My learned Nipponese friend, it would seem, is of the former. Alright, somehow I just proved that I was coward that night. Thank you, consuls. So, I believe we all understand that the door was locked and could not be opened. Proceed, witnesses. Uh, we never done nothing together, we never took nothing, we just left after that nice and quiet. Let's just press everything, to be safe. You didn't do or take anything, is that your story? Well, it was back on soon as were it. It was, Nash, it was. Didn't even have time to pull me dukes out of me. Me and Lucy Lockets. So with no time to take your hands out of your pockets, you just left nice and quietly, you say. That's right, governor. Never we ain't more than violence. Peace, love, and nibblers, we are not pleasures. We are, Nash, we are. Never even pulled me dukes out, me Lucy Lockets. So you'd clearly like us to believe. Eh, come again? As you fled from the pawnbrokers that night. Did you not run into anyone else? Um. And did you not fire a gun at that person? Um. Saints are alive, they fired a gun, you say? Ah! Blimey, Gothar! You ain't telling us it was you in the doorway. It was. Leonora! Didn't you mention that before? You were armed with a gun. And as you fled the scene, you fired that gun. At London's greatest detective, Herlock Sholmes. You shot the great Mr. Sholmes? I didn't hear that actually. There was a rumor he'd been rushed to the hospital. The great Sholmes? That's beyond the pale. On the night in question. This pair were arrested by the police within minutes of the discovery of the crime scene. Their suspicious countenance rapidly gave them away. <laughs> and once searched, a firearm was indeed found in their possession. Furthermore, the barrel shows signs of a shot having been fired from it. The prosecution invites his lordship to examine the firearm recovered from these brothers. And I bet it's only gonna have one bullet gone and it's like, yeah, see, this was the one used to, like, aim at Sholmes and blah 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 blah. Yes, indeed. Remnants of powder around the muzzle, as you say, counsel. The court will hold this weapon as evidence. The Skulkin Brothers gun. A firearm found in possession. Skulkin Brothers are signs a single round was fired. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, oh, they couldn't have shot the, the pawnbroker because only one shot was fired. Now, my learned Nipponese friend. Yes? Here's to you successfully presenting the evidence. Hmm? For yes, there are the telltale signs of spent powder on this gun and a single bullet missing from the cylinder. But the prosecution demands evidence that was fired at the scene of the crime under scrutiny in this trial. Well, I don't need evidence. Because I was there. However, the rest of us in this courtroom were not. If the defense fails to provide evidence in support of its rash claim, we shall have no choice but to toast your incompetence and move on. Oh my gosh, is the bullet gonna be stuck in Sholm's body like it was for, um, Von Karma? Oh my gosh, no. Evidence that these two fired the gun before they left Windbanks that night. 
The court demands that all claims are affirmed as clear proof. What evidence shows that these witnesses unloaded a firearm in the pawnbrokers that night? Um, uh, Gina, blood samples. Those are the blood samples? Dice fired Mason is purple. Windebanks is blue. Someone's is green. Nope. Um, uh, Palm Broker's ticket, Iris's manuscript, McGilded's notes. Um, death is due to, and from the back. Photograph burden, storm shoulder, single. Gun belonging to Mr. Windebank that Jean was holding when she was unconscious, or sign of. Uh, let's examine this, first of all. Um, so there's ammunition still loaded in five of this re revolver, six cylinders. Yes, which tells us that only a single shot has been fired from it. Exactly. The bullet that hit Hurley, in fact, isn't it? Yes, it happened almost as soon as we'd walk in through Windebank's door. I'll make those brothers pay. But how? Like, we don't have any definitive evidence. Um, is there something on the bottom? No. Um, this is just gonna be the cylinder talk again. Hmm... Uh, on the back of a photograph... I don't think this is anything important. Gina in charge of her defense... I don't think we need that anymore. Three... Is it this? Like, this photo? I'll present it. Because it's the only thing with, um, a bullet. <laughs> The evidence is in this portfolio. What, what on earth do you have there, counsel? During the course of our investigations, we discovered a number of bloodstains. Not trusting the police to do the job they're trained to do. How arrogantly Nipponese of you. Shut your mother flippin' mouth and wait till I'm finished talking. Well, anyway... We analyzed all the blood samples we found and recorded the results of this portfolio. And you claim to have this evidence the court is demanding therein. Yes, my lord. Random thought, does anyone else remember when we need to go to our local CVS to get our photos developed? Uh, local CVS, like Kodak shops, I remember that. I kind of want to go get film developed again. It's nice to have, like, um, pictures to hang out. No more darling, the council present the pertinent evidence at once. What do you have in your portfolio that proves these witnesses unloaded a firearm at the scene? Isn't it this? There's a bullet right there! What's that? Explain! It's a photographic print taken at Winterbank's palm brokery on the day of the incident. From the scene of the crime, is it? Is... is that... A bullet hole? And if my eyes do not deceive me, it appears as if the bullet it appears the bullet is still lodged there. Yes, as your lordship noticed. The bullet pierced Mr. Winbeck's calendar. The date shown being the 16th of April, the very day of the pawnbroker's death. The incident occurred at one hour after midnight. But this indicates that a separate shot had been fired sometime after the calendar had been set to the 16th. That's right. And while it isn't irrefutable, the defense believes. This is credible evidence that witnesses did fire a round from their gun into the pawnbrokers that night. Hey. Hold up. How does the prosecution stand, Lord Van Zeeks? I mean, you asked for proof that a, sh got a shot was fired. Here it is. And he's gonna be like, Eh, hey, hey, didn't really prove that Gina did shoot her. Be, 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 be. If that is the direction my learned friend wishes to take, the prosecution has no objection. What? Hey, Sooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Hope you've been well, dude. But you'll forgive me for flinging my hollowed chalice aside in disgust at the repugnancy it exposes. 
Yes, on the night in question, these brothers entered the pawnbrokery illegally. And like the bold baddies they claim to be, opened fire on the new arrivals before fleeing back onto the streets. Hey! Take it easy, a couple. You can't hell land us in the suit. We are a deal. You won't go and get into the details. Tell him, Salty. Set the bloke straight. I have nothing to add. So he knew, did he? Van Zeeks knew their testimony would almost certainly expose the extent of their crimes. It will seem now that I owe my learned the Nibonese friend a word of gratitude. What do you mean? What I mean is that you have helpfully confirmed an important fact. To what fact do you refer, Lord Van Zeeks? As has been established, at the point of their arrest, a single shot had been fired from the brother's gun. However, if that shot found its target in Mr. Sholmes, then clearly these witnesses cannot be accused of the fatal shooting of the proprietor and victim. Ah, uh, don't worry, I knew this. This isn't gun this isn't life changing. In other words, these two men have no material connection to the murder of Mr. Windebank at all. So that's it. Oh, no. No, it's gonna be that Mr. Windebank actually shot the the bullet in the calendar is gonna be Windebank's, and they actually took Windebank's gun and shot him. Like I think Ringo shot him, and then Windebank was like, uh, and then he walked to the storeroom to get away. And um he, he collapsed and somehow they gave Gina the gun and I don't know. But that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm, I think happened. That's it, we didn't have nothing to do with it. We didn't ask, we didn't, that's what I reckon. Your crimes include unlawful entry, intent to steal, burglary, and let us not forget, attempted murder. Quite a catalog, eh, fellas? We're in for it now, bruv. Now then, let us take a moment to consider the aforementioned great detective, Mr. Herlock Scholz. It would seem the man patronized the pawnbrokers in question somewhat regularly. Where is he going with this? Mr. Scholz appears to take pleasure in tinkering with eccentric machinery. Eccentric? Says who? Not me. Don't give me that look. He installed a pair of machines like this one in the victim's shop. Oh! That's one of Haley's red-handed recorders. What is that, Council? It has the appearance of a photographic contraption. As your lordship has surmised, it is indeed a camera attached to a small timing device. Every half an hour, it automatically photographs the interior of the establishment. The idea being that if a thief were to break into the shop, he would be caught red-handed. Hmm. The prosecution has obtained the photographs taken by the device on the night in question. As the court will observe, copious identity identical prints are produced in quite desultory fashion. I don't know what that means. Desultory? Hmm. Rather prodigal, I feel. In fact, there are two such devices in the victim's shop, my lord. If I may refer the court to the plan of the premises, their respective positions are here and here. You say these cameras produce a print every half hour. I'm afraid I fail to see how that would help if the anticipated thief conducted his activities in one of the many 30 minute inter intervals. One can only pray that the would-be colonel lingers, my lord. Hmm. On the night in question, the witnesses currently in the stand were not caught on camera. Hehe, <laughs> that's a bit of fried talk, eh, bro? They not was a skulking. Witnesses, at what time did your trespassing begin? It must have been just after one, right, bro? 
Must have been Nash. Must have been. Yeah, just go on one. In which case, minutes before these brothers entered the establishment. What scene might we expect to see within the shop? Let us examine the evidence. You couldn't give us this before we freaking cross-examine the witnesses? Like, what were you waiting for? A freaking parade? Good lord. It's... it's the defendant. I bet she took the gun because Windbank was like, oh my gosh, because he saw the brothers and she went to shoot them. And then... And then Ringo shot him and they both ran to the to the back storeroom and they collapsed and locked the door and that's gonna be what that's what happened. Miss Chila Lestrade. As the court can clearly see. Because she's not aiming it at him. The accused is pictured, gun in hand, facing the victim over the shop counter. Note that course in the proprietor to open the door to a storeroom. Quite, one can only too easily imagine the events that unfolded. The court will take this photographic print as evidence, if you please, counsel. Let's examine this in detail. Ugh. Yeah, because... Because he always keeps it on- Can I get some, like, of the older photos, too? Because he said he kept his gun on the counter, but where on the counter? Because presumably it would be closer to him. Because he always- He always, like, whipped it out real quickly. I don't know. I- I don't believe it. Jenny. In short. The accused is the only person who could possibly have killed Mr. Windebank. Uh... No, but then someone... someone else shot Sholmes. Oh, same lord. Wonder if I might put in a word at this point? Go ahead, Miss Coleman. Took a valley bullet to the knee in the Battle of My Wand. 1880, don't you know? Decorated for it and all that, but forced to retire from service, sadly. Of course, a male can never outshine the exploits of chaps like us on a battlefield. Yes, Miss Foreman, and what exactly is your point? Carried on the battle after retirement, you see? The battle of daily life, if you like. And here I am now, leading this small squadron. Six men, all good and true. And we've all gone down together, mark my words, one for all and all for one. So, what the heck are you trying to say? The ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached agreement, have they? Is that what we are to understand? Well, Mr. Foreman, is that correct? In the manner of speaking, yes, that is the goddamn squatter's position, sir. What? No, it's too soon to make a judgment here. Status report for the court, men, on the double. His lordship insists on promptitude at all times, and that goes for making decisions, too. I think they'll find the truth as clear as day now. I can reach out and touch it. I wouldn't have left it in there. I just wouldn't. But in all honesty, I can't actually remember. Yeah, there's gonna be a bullet stuck in Sholmes. That means there are three shots fired. Cause I'm I'm assuming that the one the calendar is from Windebank's gun, Gina shot it. But then Windebank had to die from a bullet shot that I think the brothers shot at him. But then there has to be a third shot that shot Sholmes, but who could it be? Situation clear. Stop. No more room for that. Stop. Truth now undeniable. Stop. I am very sorry for brothers. They are unlucky. Oh man, I made him sound too similar to Fancy's, whatever. 
Very well, and now Kong Pong each member of the jury to state his or her leaning in this matter. And now they're all gonna say guilty, and I'm gonna be like, yo, let me, let me, um, do the whatever thing again. Convince two or four of them to change your minds. In Soviet Russia, toast eats you. Mmm, <laughs> toast. Sounds yummy. I really want some grilled cheese, man. I've been craving grilled cheese and cheesy soon. It doesn't indeed appear that the jury is unanimous and it's leaning already. That photograph. It must be the definitive evidence that Gregson mentioned. But Jenny didn't shoot him. No, of course not. Ah! Sorry, I spilled my M&Ms. My lord! The defense wishes to assert its right to a summation examination. But well, the court grants permission. No, 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 stop wasting your time. So you fail to admit defeat again. How unsurprising. I mean, you'd hate to admit defeat too, so shut your trap. We shall proceed immediately with the summation examination. Mr. Foreman, are all members of the jury ready? Absolutely, sir. Always ready for action, my chaps. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. No! <laughs> the jury's contentions. All the evidence clearly points to the finger of guilt at this young pickpocketing. As a housemaid, I should like to see filthy eyesores properly and vigorously eliminated. I think you'll find that if you look at that photograph in stereo, the truth will just pop out. If I've left it in there, I should think there'll be repercussions by now. Mind made up. Stop. Global radio transmission of verdict to follow. Stop. In Motherland, we say never judge by clothes, judge by head. I am convinced brothers are innocent. Is he working with the brothers? Hmm. The circumstance of the crime and the evidence do indeed implicate the defendant rather comprehensively. The storeroom locked from the inside, in which the victim and the accused were discovered alone. And in the accused hands, the fatal revolver, the firing of which was heard by these witnesses. Not to mention this print. So, see, if we look at this print, then she clearly has a gun by the counter. And we're assuming that Windebank ran to the back storeroom to lock himself in to be safe. But Gina was also in there, so you were saying she, like, followed him and then he locked the safe? storeroom and then decided to like collapse that that doesn't seem plausible to me that that seems too weird take it from a chap who's seen action on the battlefield that young girl's on the verge of pulling the belly trigger thanks a lot mr Sholmes. Oh dear heard his cameras were supposed to help not hinder i'm afraid i think you have an uphill struggle ahead of you but Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windebank. Which means there's more to the situation that we've yet to see. Agreed. You have the full counsel. Proceed with the submission examination. Also, we still have to get to do um, all the different blood colors. Like, um, Thrice Fired Mason has to pop up again. The Gilded has to pop up again. All the evidence clearly puts the finger to go. Um, this has made its filthy ice was promptly rigorously eliminated. Uh, photograph and stereo, the truth will pop out. Oh wait, I can press them. All the blood colors, red, dark red, bright red, <laughs> and brown. <laughs> what do you mean, look at the photograph and stereo? Sorry, what, don't, don't you know? If you look at a photograph of print normally, it looks as though the pickpocket girl is about to shoot the victim, obviously. But there's no indication that the defendant ever fired the gun. All I'm saying is that if you look at the same print in stereo, it could reveal all sorts of new information. 
By any chance? Are you a fan of stereoscopes? Ooh, how did you know? Let's call it a lucky guess. It never gets old, seeing two prints merge into one before your eyes. It's extraordinary, it's captivating, it's the height of modernity. Uh, of course. Oh yes, I think you'll find the stereoscope is here to stay. Given what new perspectives we could only dream of before, it's the greatest adventure the world has ever seen. If only you could give me a new perspective on this case, I might agree with you. Hmm? So this guy, I really feel like he left a bullet in the body. Uh, what exactly have you been muttering about all this time, sir? You keep talking about having left something somewhere or something like that. Ah, so sorry. The gun and pawn shop owner didn't work, right? It only had one bullet in there and it was empty. And then the two brothers, their gun also showed it was only one shot fired. So that would explain Blaine, one hole in Windebank's body, and the bullet in the calendar. But Sholmes was also shot, so there have to be three bullets. I just don't know where the third gun shot came from. As you can probably tell, I'm a surgeon. A surgeon? That totally passed me by. How? Of course, people conducting surgery in this country aren't considered to be doctors, oh no. Even though me and my car are at the forefront of medical science, the real brains in the field. So, what is it that you think you've left behind? Oh, well, that's a little embarrassing, to be honest. You see, I was operating on someone yesterday. Standard thing, went in through the abdomen. But when I'd finished the procedure, I... Well, I couldn't find my scalpel anywhere. Okay, so it wasn't a bullet, he left a scalpel inside. Uh, unless it went through him. Unless it went through him. What? Did he? That means Gina shot Sholmes. But then... Gina could have shot Sholmes because the brothers were still in the shop when we came in. And it was so dark and... And we were so like, oh my gosh, Sholmes was shot before we even checked the storeroom. It could have been her. Did he? Surely not. Exactly, surely not. You say to yourself, don't you? Very, is it? That's what's been troubling me this whole time. Could I really have left my scalpel inside the fellow's belly? No, of course I couldn't. Then he'd be in excruciating pain. So there you have it. Like I said, a little embarrassing, really. That's one way of putting it. The other is manslaughter. That's exactly my concern. And seeing as this case appears to be all but sewn up. All I need to focus on trying to remember exactly what I've sewn up elsewhere. Maybe they're making it look like he operated on Sholmes, but he didn't. Now, I'm sure I made sure everything was back as it should be. Well, as sure as you can be without being sure. I'm sure you need to be more sure. Hmm, who can we pray against each other? Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, radio transmission? What do you mean? <gasps> radio! That's how they're stealing all the secrets. Are oh, you from the Far East? Stop. Um, yes, from the Empire of Japan. All communication with the Far East nations used to take place by mail. Royal mail steamers take more than a month to complete the journey. Ah, but now we have the electric telegram, so we can send messages using electrical signals. Radio. Spotify the worst Spotify. <laughs> True. Thousands of miles of cables have been laid along the ocean beds connecting the entire world. Thousands of miles of cable? On the ocean bed? It makes my head hurt just thinking about it. You're very well informed, young lady. <laughs> but cables will soon be a thing of the past. Stop. And just when I was starting to catch up. Just when I was starting to catch up. Radio transmission is the future. Stop. Messages carried over airwaves to four corners of the globe. Stop. Excitement growing. Stop. Atmosphere electric. Stop. Right. Try not to wear out your fingers. Error of wireless tele telegraphy. Stop. Driving technological revolution. Stop. And people say inventions like the stereoscope are the height of technology. What other piffle? 
understand it. I really can't. They're just silly toys. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, pursue. Um, journal number three. Sorry to interrupt when you're obviously fuming, but what? Do you perhaps have something to say about journal number five's last remark? As if I couldn't guess. Oh, you bet I do. Say that again. Go on, I do. Goodness, are you talking to me? I think you just might be, yes. You think stereoscopes are just toys, do you, huh? Absolutely. I mean, really. A machine to view photographs in three dimensions. Why on earth would you not just use your eyes to look at the world around you? It's all three dimensional. What a great way to appease the man. No, I'm sorry. Stereoscopes are of no practical use at all. You just don't know. Pardon? I think you'll find that viewing a photograph through a stereoscope can unlock all sorts of possibilities. I'm obviously going to have to demonstrate. What sort of possibilities? Well, take a crime scene for example. If you had a pair of photographs from a crime scene that you can view through a stereoscope, it could reveal hidden clues that ne you never even noticed before. What? Have you got any Bruno? Any prints we could look at with a stereoscope? The cats! How about this print here? It should do the trick, I think. The cats! Ugh, I was wrong. I can't actually think of anything. What? No, wasn't that it? Yeah, on the back of a photograph. Look at this photograph. It's a photograph of a cat. <laughs> what? Really? Oh dear, I think I may need to have a stereoscopic look at your brain sometime. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, of the crime scene? Wait a minute, wait, 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 of the crime scene that is it this? He's but I only have one of these. Okay, let me let me go back and press her again. Frack! Um press, 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 press. Yeah, 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 I thought he just wanted to, like, show, hey, this is how stereoscopy works. Not like, hey, here's a crime scene photo, but let me try. I don't get penalized for it, so it's fine. Um, pursue. Ha ha ha, hilarious hijinks. So, oh, so funny. My piece of technology is better than yours. Whoa, you're an idiot, because you're a man. Nom, 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 nom. Take a crime scene. Oh, uh, yeah, that should have been my first clue. Look at pictures of a crime scene. Oops. Back, please. Back. There we go. If only we could speed through trials this quickly in your life. I know, right? All right then, juror number three. Are you saying you can do this with any two suitable photographic prints? Of course I can. Very well then, I'd like you to demonstrate. I'd be delighted to. Just give me one more print and I'll amaze you all. <sighs> but I don't have any other photograph. I don't have any other photograph. Some take five years. Five years, that's insane. Uh, just give me one more print and I'll beige it all, but what's the review scene? Oh, that, um, return to question. I don't have another photograph. Should I just use the cat? Would that be stupid? Um, no, wait. There sh is there another photograph here? No. Um, 
What other photograph do I use? favorite was the story of Marvel suing Disney for The Incredibles being a ripoff of the Fantastic Four, but the case took so long Disney bought Marvel and then dropped the case because at that point they were suing themselves. Why would- ripoff of Fantastic Four? How? I mean, of course super strength is one thing, and then Elastigirl? I guess she's like a ripoff of Dr. Reed. And then Violet? She's like a copy of Susan Storm. But can Susan Storm also do shields? I thought she could only do invisibility. But then Dash is not like the Human Torch. So like, what? I... Disney just needs to calm their tits. Ugh. Mm. What photograph would work? I can't give like the same one. I'm just gonna try this. Wait, sorry, what do you mean? One more print. Oh dear, oh dear. Don't you have this in the Far East? Don't you know how stereoscope works? I don't know. What? You need two photographs for a stereoscope, remember? Yeah, but I don't have another one of, of Gina. The guy didn't give me any. You know, one for the left eye and one for the right. Oh, oh yes, I remember now. But the print we have from the pawnbrokery is just a normal photograph. No, 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 I think you'll find that the clue is in the name. It's a stereoscope, not a monoscope. You always need two prints. You don't say! Thanks for the friendly explanation. Hmm. Well, if we obtain another print at some point later in the trial, we can always show it to this young man then. I think you'll find that know-it-all expression is really starting to annoy me. Let's get things back on track, shall we, Council? So somehow, I have to get another photograph from... All we need is another shot from a slightly different location. We can see the scene in three dimensions. Maybe it's when I press this last guy because he's gonna be like, Hey, the clothes don't blah 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 blah. Please tell me you're not Villain Borshevik. The Russian revolutionary. Re revolutionary? Duh, I believe there is such a rumor. It's just a rumor? As you see, I have unfortunate appearance. I look like wishes criminal. Your words, not mine. Just want to point that out. People call me revolutionary, murderer, autocrat. And which club fits? Good day, I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. Right, that didn't sound stage at all. You'll forgive me for having my doubts. To be treated like vicious criminal all the time is very, very painful. People do not realize. So I have much sympathies for these brothers. People say they are criminals only because of how they look. The Skulkin brothers? Duh, maybe they went inside Pawnbroker's shop. But they have done nothing wrong. That is all I want to say. The Skulkin brothers did nothing wrong that night? All right, well, first of all, that's one not so little misunderstanding I'll need to clean up straight away. Tell me something, Iris. Hmm? What is it, Reno? 
The jurors are chosen at random from the inhabitants of London Town, aren't they? Yes, it's amazing, isn't it? In that case... How is it that there's a Russian tourist sitting among them who looks for all the world like a revolutionary? I wish I knew. Hmm. If I can't change the minds of more than half of these six jurors, the trial will be over. But we know that Ginny would never shoot anyone. Yes, so we need to find the contradictions in what these jurors are saying and pit them against each other. I just need to get another photograph. I must be ready to go whatever lengths I have to to convince them of Gina's innocence. Okay, so I should press the first two guys then. Press. You're Mr. Matsumi's landlord, Mr. Gerda, aren't you? We really must stop meeting like this. Oh, you're that loyal chap. Well, there's a turn for the looks. Yes, rather a turbulent time we had back then. Some extraordinary events took place at your house, that's for sure. Luckily, Mr. Sholmes and I were able to get to the bottom of it all. I think we did rather a lot for you, didn't we? See, now we're like, kind of manipulating him to be like, mm, we did you a solid, so you should return the favor. I mean, obviously. I wouldn't be suggesting that, therefore, you should change your leaning to not guilty or anything. Can't be done, I suppose. The curse of the Garazan house was the talk of the town after that business. Law just moved out and I couldn't get a bally sword to take up the tenancies. It's because you have no windows. Oh. I haven't had the heart to break the news to Jerry yet. Bad enough that the old girl's clapped up. Is she in jail? Yes, can't be denied. You do do rather a lot. But not for us, that's for Dash and Sin. I suppose not. Of course. There can be no suggestion of there being the reason I'm leaning towards guilty here, obviously. Obviously. But honestly. I really wish he paid more attention to the trial and less to juror number two. Ew. Has he been, like, peeking at her? Gross. His housemate, blah blah blah. Polishing the bench, I see. Again. A maid's work is never done, but a blemish must remain. Um, what exactly do you mean by filthy eyesores? On my way to market for his lordship, I have to pass through the East End. The place is full of beggars, pickpusses, and crossmen. Discover the earth. A little harsh, perhaps. Let me be plain. If it were up to me, all those bat slums would be made spick and span or eradicated. At least we have people like the great detective working to achieve these important goals. And you're referring to Mr. Herlock Holmes. That's right. I'd like to keep abreast of his exploits by reading Ralph's magazine in between my duties. He does wonders cleaning up London streets. In my opinion, he should be declared an honorary maid of the castle. Mr. Holmes, A maid? It's really quite unforgivable. Got the scum having the audacity to shoot a very great detective. Minor detail, it was the two brothers in the stand who shot Mr. Sholmes, not the defendant. A minor detail indeed. They're all got the scum as far as I'm concerned. Well, it just might be an idea to get our facts straight anyway. Yes, alright. I shall amend my statement. Those brothers are discovered yet. They should swing for shooting the great detective. Okay, so I should bear her against all the evidence. Another shot from a slightly different location. If I left it in there, I think it shall be repercussions. My made up stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Um, well, since he changed his statement, I should press this again. Is he looking for another maid wife? Ew, gross. Can it really show up new clothes clues though? No, no, unless you try. How about this print here? It should do the trick, I think. I only have one! Stop doing this! Uh, or what about what if I do that? 
Oh, I was wrong. I can't do it. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know. Uh, Cause I haven't gotten another photo yet. Let me let me just try him again. Then mm. number three. You're saying you could do this only two suitable photograph prints? Of course I can. Very well then. I'd like you to demonstrate. I'd be I'd be delighted. Just give me one print and I'll amaze you all. I don't have another one. I don't. Can I present this again? <laughs> Wait, sorry. What do you mean, one more print? Oh. He's a cheater. How am I supposed to get on that? Yeah, 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 I know how. This is frustrating because I know exactly what has to happen, but I don't know how to get there. And this is what I run into, into ev in every single Phoenix Wright game. It's like, I know logically what clues and evidence have to be like presented. It's just getting to that point. It's freaking annoying. See, cause once he does the stereoscopy and it says, Oh, all evidence clearly points the finger of this young pickpocket team that I can pit them against each other and they'll be like, whoa, it actually wasn't her. And then she could be pitted against him. Maybe I should just try that. Um, I'll just try it. Go, go, fight. <laughs> Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good lord. Counsel, explain yourself. Oh my, my statement? Contradictory? Contra de con, con... Juror number six, you've got the wrong end of the stick. I do not have stick, I have mouse. As juror number two said earlier, when the Skulkin brothers fled the scene of the night in question, they fired a shot from their revolver. Yes, they shot poor Mr. Shums in the abdomen, I understand. Surely you're not going to tell the court now that you didn't hear. Abdomen. Abdomen. Abdo. Sir? Sorry, sorry, my English is still learning. You are telling the court you didn't hear that. Forgive me, I did not hear. Ugh. Ah, here is word, abdomen, part of person's body containing stomach and other vital organs. If this is what you mean, you should say in plain English, I am Russian, not native speaker. Who thought it was a good idea to let this man be on the jury again? So, you are telling me these brothers who look like criminals were lying. They said before, we never done nothing, but truth is they shot detective. Da, this is double negative. Yes, that's exactly right. Oh, don't squeeze the mouse. Lying is wrong, especially when lies said by person who looks like criminal. Coming from you, that seems surprisingly prejudiced. This means... When they said we never took nothing, maybe it was also a big fat lie. Is it true? Well, according to the police report, no stolen goods were found, so... Enough, I trust no one now. It's not the mouse's fault though, sir. The mouse is moving with him, I like it. Yeah, but I'm afraid that he's gonna crush the mouse. I must see with my own eyes. I must investigate crime scene myself. No, you're gonna do something shady. What, what? Wait, what? I'm afraid that won't be pass. It's this, you know, easily. Sorry? With the prints from Hurley's red-handed recorder. Ah. If 
can compare the print that pictures Ginny and the next print from half an hour later. They'll be able to see straight away if anything was taken or not. And then uh, now we can do the stereoscope and now uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, here we go. Kiri, Miss Prosecutor. Calling on the prosecution in the middle of a summation and examination of all times. The print showing the accused threatening the victim after she broke into the shop is this one. Following this, the victim and the accused moved into the storeroom. Meanwhile, the Skulkin brothers entered the shop and summarily heard the fatal gunshot ring out. Sadly, none of these events were captured on film. This is the print produced by the camera half an hour later, after the brother's flight. So this was taken after Holy was shot then? As far as I can tell. Nothing has been taken. That does seem to be the case, until we do the service copy. I can't notice anything that's obviously missing in the second print. So the brothers who look like criminals told only one lie. They shot man, but they stole nothing. It would seem so, yes. Good. No, not good. You were right, I did not understood the situation. Now I know brothers of light, I think it very important to continue the trial. Yay! Well done, Rina. The balance is shifting. Well, let's start, I suppose. There must be more in what these jurors are saying that I can use to expose the truth. If I can do that, we just might turn the situation to our favor still. Thank you, Council. Continue with the submission examination. I kindly hand that new photographic print to the bailiff to be followed as evidence. Thank the Lord! Another print of the court record. I wonder if we can make use of that. Okay, I'm not gonna examine this one because I'm immediately going to give it to the dude. Uh, press. Blah, 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 How about this print here? Okay, now give me a second one. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, give me one more print. All right, these two prints were both taken with the same camera and wind banks on the night in question. Yes, I see. Tell me, Mr. Um, lawyer. Do you know how stereographic images work? Do you understand the principle? Well, I think so. I did have a lesson only yesterday. The left and right eye images need to be the same, only with a slight shift in the positions of some objects. Then when your brain merges the two images together inside your head, it notices the shift as if it were depth. Yes, exactly. It's that small shift between certain objects and the two pictures that's really important. So what happens if you use two photographs that are exactly the same then? No, no, obviously that wouldn't work at all. Not for seeing the scene three-dimensionally, anyway. Oh. Oh! Of course, now I see. I think the young girl has discovered the secret. I have, I have. Can you even cross your eyes before you tell me? Have another look at these two pictures from Hurley's camera, Reno. Go on. Can you see that there's a really obvious difference between them? Of course there is. There are two people in the first and no people in the second. Well, yes, you can see that straight away, but now... Try looking at the pictures in three dimensions. Alright, I'll give it a go. So to start with... You have to cross your eyes and then try to make the two pictures overlap exactly. I don't see anything, it's just a blurry mess. Ugh. 
Let's see if by crossing my eyes I can make the quill pens from each other, each picture overlap in the middle. My screen is too far. I can't, I can't see. Oh, I can't do it. Wait. No, I, I can't see it. Well, did you manage to see it properly, Rudo? Oh. Just say yes, I saw it. Ah! What? What's going on with these two pictures? Some of the things on the camera just sort of they sort of jump out at you. What? My eyes, they burn! Yeah, my eyes burn. <gasps> yes, yes, yes! That's it, you say? That's the other amazing power of stereoscopes. Uh, other amazing power? I should we going to explain this black magic, eh? Why did Deuce do so many things on the counter seem to jump out at you like that? I think you'll find that if you consider the basic principle of the stereoscope, you'll answer your own question. Basic principles of the stereoscope? As I said before, if you try to look at two identical pictures using a stereoscope, it won't work at all. It's the slight shift in the positions of certain objects that lets you see pictures three-dimensionally. In other words... Even though at first glance it seems the objects on the counter haven't moved at all between the two pictures, this shows that actually there must have been a slight shift in their positions. I can't see it. Yes, there must have been. So what does that show us? Now hold fire there, sir! Got a reasonable grasp of this whole cross-eyed business, I would say. But why the double does the shift between the two prints exist in the first place? Well, what's the answer, fellow? Come on, you're the cross-eyed master! What? Me? I have the first idea. You know, you know, it's quite simple. It is? Just think it through step by step. The first photograph was taken at 1 a.m. Then, 30 minutes later, the second photograph was taken. Oh, the objects kind of shifted. They moved to the right. But the position of some items on the counter appears to have shifted slightly in the interim. So that means... That means that sometime in the half hour interval, someone must have tampered with the things on the counter. Zoogers! Someone tampered. New information. Stop. Not mentioned in testimony so far. Stop. Yes. We've had to go around in circles a little here, it seems. But I'm starting to see what I should be aiming at in the summation examination now. Ladies and gentlemen, the question now is clear. We know the items on the countertop were moved, but by whom? Are you... Are you suggesting you might know? Of course. I can tell you right now who is responsible for the almost imperceptible shift of items. I don't know. Wow, the 26 and 27? He claims to be a professional baddie by trade. Mm. Oh, yeah, who the heck is this guy? Like, we haven't seen him again. Uh, In the... Who could have moved it? Who moved it? Let's save just in case... Who could have possibly had reason to move it? Um, it was after Gina got the gun. It might have been one of the brothers because they said they came in after one. And they were this direction because they had to shoot at the doorway to get to Sholmes. Mm. I'm just gonna say him, whatever. It was the witnesses currently on the stand, the Skulkin brothers. Wait! This does not agree with what brother said in testimony before. They said they did not even have time to pull dukes from Lucy Lockets. 
My Facebook says Dux is meaning hands and Lucy Lockets meaning pockets. But is this another lie? Is this what you are saying? Yes, I'm afraid so. Now hold on there, mate. You can't be sure of that. I quite agree. The accused is a common pick purse after all. It's perfectly plausible that she went through the things on the desk to see what she might steal. I think that's unlikely. And why exactly? As you can see from this photograph of Prince, the defendant was pointing a gun at the victim. She was pointing it at the ceiling, but okay, whatever. It would seem, as my learned friend indicated, that she was coercing Mr. Windbank to open the storeroom door. In other words, Miss Lestrade's interest lay within the storeroom, not in the main shop, giving her no reason to touch anything on the counter. All of which points to one thing. The Skulkin brothers have omitted key facts in their testimony. But the accused is a pig piss. Come on, gutter trash. Why not get it further for the wrongdoer here? Because the Skulkin brothers are thieves, madam. No better, in fact worse, than a pig purse. <sighs> I believe that these brothers were looking for something on the victim's counter that night. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you would condemn the defendant on the grounds that she is a pickpocket, would it not at least be right and proper to thoroughly scrutinize testimony given against her by two thieves? Well said. I, for one, would like to hear more from that shady pair. <laughs> because his hands can't get dirty, he hits it with his head. Can you all see now? I think you'll find staring skips aren't playthings. You've seen their extraordinary potential firsthand. And that is half. Wholeheartedly agreed. Stop. Must purchase after trial. Stop. We'll return home via Regent Street. Stop. And then Van Zeese is gonna rain on our parade and be like, Uh, no matter what you do, this is all futile because wait till you hear of us. Well, it will seem this trial has yet to run its course. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury have declared their inclinations via the mighty scales of justice. I missed it? Missed what? The, um, the doctor hitting his light? <laughs> I hereby call the summation examination to the conclusion with the balance altered in the defendant's favor. Two lean to guilty, four lean to not guilty. Accordingly, the jury is without consensus. And I order this trial to continue. Yay, well done. Oh, by the way. Oh, maybe you'll see it again later. I mean, they flip flop their minds so many times. What? You should hold on to this, Runa. You never know when it might come in useful. Why someone trial would be unusual, surely. But all right. I bet we're gonna look at the cats again or something. Mm. Or there's gonna be um, photographic prints from the other view of the shop, and we're gonna be like, "Whoa, we missed this." <laughs> Lord Valzix, you will instruct the witnesses that the court demands additional testimony from them. Yeah, throw your cup into the fire, you loser. I'm sure it won't spoil the bouquet to do so, my lord. The bouquet? What? Huh? I've won myself another chance to probe that pair about their activities that night, at least. And I won't stop probing them until I've proven that Gina is innocent. I was putting my hair up. Yeah, I think I need to tie my hair soon. It's getting annoying. I need to go get a trim so my hair could grow longer. To be continued, awesome. My throat was starting to hurt a lot, so I was like, oh man, I need a good place to stop. Save my current progress. Cool, 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 cool. So, yay. Hopefully we can finish this um, case in two more sessions. Um, but since this is the last case, maybe it'll be a little longer than that. But yeah, um, hopefully I will stay healthy and my computer will still be alive that I can stream on Thursday. Um, yeah, so and then maybe on Friday, if I'm caught up with Animal Crossing, 
I will stream like the updates and the new stuff that came out to show my new updated island design. And then I'll keep playing uh, Ace Attorney until Endwalker comes out and then I'll stream Endwalker. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, it was so nice to see you guys again. And I'm like, good to know that you're all doing well. But that's it for me tonight. My, I need to rest my throat. I'm very tired. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.